everybody, Rocktober is coming to its conclusion, and there's only one movie that is a heavy metal horror that we still haven't talked about, that people have been begging for us to talk about. They needed us to talk about it, but until then, we couldn't accept the challenge, but Scott? We- <laughs> <laughs> Tom Scott! <laughs> oh, God. We accept the challenge! <laughs> We're going to talk about rock and roll nightmare today on Horror Movie Night. Oh, God, I'm not editing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I would also like to posit a little just pin right in your, your, your suggestion that everyone was suggesting that we talk about this when it was just you for years. It was me and, and, and Sean also, who was supposed to be on this episode. Uh, he's having a little bit of a dog related emergency, but you should check out his band cassettes. Uh, so I have to tell you guys, we got an email recently and I feel like it's important to read it on this particular episode because someone sent us a playlist <laughs> They made a mixtape called the Halloween Horror Movie Rock and Roll Mixtape. 31 songs for 31 days of Rocktober. Uh, So here's the track list. It's in alphabetical order of band name. So we got Alice Cooper, the man behind the mask. Mm. Uh, Dana DeWight, hard act to follow from Night of the Comet. Doc and Dream Warriors. Jerama Rama, anything, anything from Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Ethan and the Coop with Newcomb High. Uh, George Edward with Ra- the Raiders theme um, from Raiders of the Living Dead. I don't know what that is. Uh, the original Friday the 13th theme song. The Jay Giles band Fright Night. Uh, Kep Lenning with Bud the Chud. <laughs> uh, Laz Rocket with Leatherface. Yeah. From the- Here's your invitation! <laughs> Here's a face! Uh, Lizzie Borden with Me Against the World. Yeah, of course. Fuck yeah. Also, Lizzie Borden with Soldiers of the Night from Black Roses. <laughs> Fuck yeah, again. Uh, Knights of the uh, Lords of the New Church with Good to Be Bad from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Mm. Uh, Metropolis with Dark Side of the Night from Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, we got Rock Until You Drop from Monster Squad. Yes. Paul Sabu, Street Angel from Hard Rock Zombies. Ugh. Also, the song Zombies from Hard Rock Zombies. Oh. Uh, Pseudo Echo, His Eyes from Friday the 13th Part 5. Nice. Shadow, New Year's Evil. Oh. Sorcery, I'm Back from yeah, Rocktober Blood. Awesome. I know. Uh, this one I loved because I forgot about this one. SSQ, Tonight We'll Make Love Till We Die from Return of the Living Dead. I once made love with the devil. It, it was really no big thing. Yeah. Uh, Terrence Mann, Power of the Night from Critters 2. Nice. The Dickies, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The Fibernetics, Terror Vision. Ramones, Pet Cemetery. Thor, We Live to Rock. <laughs> I Still Believe from The Lost Boys. Tony Basil in Devo with The Only One from Slaughterhouse Rock. And then Ooh. wrapping up the month with Wasp. Scram it till you like it! Oh, my God. So let me pull up who this person was because we need to formally thank them for I, I can't. There's very few things that I would trade out for other songs. I think that's a very good just, hey, here's some songs from horror movies. I'll get rid of that um, that song from uh, I'll get rid of Man Behind the Mask. I absolutely despise that song. Uh, I love that song. Um, so Mike. Prezzetto, I think it is. And this is the email he said, too. Hey, guys, digging the show. Can't wait to hear the rock and roll horror episodes. Coincidentally, a few weeks ago, I made a playlist uh, for October. For October, 31 songs of 80s horror movies. Uh, and I'd love it to share it with you. I'll send you the Dropbox link if that's cool. Hope you're into it. Keep up the good work. So, Mike, we were super into it. I'm sorry that I didn't respond to your email. Um, yeah. so- I feel like people that email us probably should understand that we're more likely than not going to talk about it on the on on the show. Yeah, yeah, I just I always like to give a response. I'll probably email him at some point. Anyway, Brian, you have a story that you want to tell us. You want to do it now or wait until we talk about Rock and Roll Nightmare a bit? I shard it last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> And it was it was <laughs> so so a quick question because I know where you were last weekend. <laughs> Was this in Disney with Jade's parents? Yes. So, <laughs> oh man. So, I'm I'm in Disney, right? And uh, me and my me and my best friend two times. We we 
we send each other weird things. It's mainly farts or or our our poops sometimes. You know, we're we're like that type of relationship. So I'm in Disney and I get out of the shower and I'm like, oh, I have to fart. What can I do to send a funny fart video? So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tuck my balls behind my legs and I'm going to have my, 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 my towel around me. And then I'm just going to drop my towel and it's just going to be my, my tucked, you know, me tucked. And then I push out a fart. So I did. And it turned out great. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the fart could have been a little louder, but it had a nice little wetness to it. So I'm walking with pride over to the bed and I, and I drop down to watch the video and I, I, I realize oh, I didn't dry my butt as well as I did. So I go, oh, no. <laughs> I go and I, I got a wipe and there's just shit all over the white town. So I'm like staring at all at this shit stain. Um, and then I hear Jade like about to walk into the room. So I, so I run in the bathroom and she just sees terrified me, close the door and then looks down on the bed and just seems what seems to be a nude video of me on the bed, which is not a good look. She thought for a second I possibly could have been cheating. So then she, she hits play. And I'm sure at that point she wishes I was cheating. So I'm washing this towel in the sink, trying to embarrassing, embarrassingly explain how I sharned it. And as I come out and she's professing her disgust to me, I, I look down and on the edge of the bed, shit water. It's just like, oh. it looks like, it looks like brown drool. And oh. <laughs> so literally when I dropped on the bed, my asshole drooled a little bit. Now I'm going to stop here and I'm going to let everyone know that this isn't a big fish scenario. This isn't a Hollywood redoing where I'm tweaking it. This is 100% true. Everything that I've said up to this point. So I nonchalantly like can clean off the edge of the bed without her noticing. I go in the bathroom and, to grab my shorts. And there it was no bigger than a Hershey kiss <laughs> elegantly plopped on my shorts. The official shark. <laughs> Uh, Brian, you've had a terrible week with poop. <laughs> Scott, you don't know this, but he also accidentally pooped in a toilet that didn't flush and didn't have water inside of it. I, I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Not talking about horror movies and just talking about body horror? Is that... <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, this we, is our society episode. Oh, fuck. I won't, I won't take up any more time, but I will say that my company just bought a brand new building, and I shit in it before the water was set up. <laughs> you just spent eight minutes telling me about a wet fart. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is why we hired him as our co-host. <laughs> it really is, uh, but hire implies that he gets paid. This is true. Um, <laughs> Unless he, he he can eat laughter. No. no. <laughs> if you're eating laughter, I'm pretty sure that your ass would be a lot cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, so rock and roll nightmare. Uh, so we talked about Black Roses earlier in this month. And, I mean, you know, there's two sides of the coin. Are you a Black Roses guy or are you a, a rock and roll nightmare guy? And I personally am firmly... In the rock and roll nightmare field, Black uh, Roses. Can't you be both? You can absolutely be both, but I mean, one of them has got to be better than the other. And for me, Black Roses is fine. It's got the better soundtrack. It's got some really great moments, but there is so few films that have the level of insane that this movie, specifically the last fifty minutes of this movie, have. <laughs> I love this film. This is my first oh. watch. Brian was. This was your first watch too, right? It was my first watch, and I it was the last time I'm going to watch a movie without with Jade for this podcast because <laughs> I, I I didn't focus, I didn't enjoy it. It was just like I can't believe I'm putting her through this. This movie is awful, and and at 50 minutes, I said, you know what, I'm not doing this. I can't do this to her, so I turned it off, and then I went to bed. And then this morning, I watched the last 30 minutes in all, and I was just like, this is awesome. Everything about this. <laughs> It's quite. So, it's, it's it's an absolute jewel of a film. It, it doesn't. There's not a moment that makes sense. Like it's just thrown together with band aids and super glue, and like they hope for the best. It's not band aids and super glue. It's like Aquanet and cocaine. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> dude. 
like uh, okay so so let's let's talk about the intro because the intro has no place in this movie but it's there so let's talk about it yeah yeah there's a little boy who's the director's son i found out later on that through absolute sense through one john london who <laughs> met the director by mistake <laughs> yeah that when, that little boy's name is jesse Delang- d'angelo he was scott's favorite character in uh, black roses and he, he also oh. Oh, he's yeah, the oh, best actor. Jesus yeah. Christ. You're yeah, gonna just gonna use this to repeat yeah. the Black Roses to to Beetlejuice, aren't you? Uh no, because I was gonna say he was also in Jitters, which was starring James Hong, who's in everything, but more specifically, he's in the shadow starring Alec Baldwin, who was in Beetlejuice. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. James Khan? James Hong. He's like an old. So, do you remember the one young Asian guy that's in everything? He's the old Asian guy that's in everything. (laughs) No, is that in in the shadow, which is a favorite of mine, and will absolutely be discussed on a Patreon bonus if (laughs) Patreon the patrons get their heads out of their asses next month. (laughs) Uh, You should you should pay for our Patreon tier where you get to listen to our bonus episodes, and you should then choose the shadow when i put it up because it's fantastic and i love that film uh but is is james hong the guy who brian you've seen the shadow right not in that like so long in year, it's been yeah. years we used to watch it a lot i have We've... it on vhs and I've, I've probably seen it like 40 times it's like a fucking in yeah. the kelly household it was one of those we rented it on pay-per-view when you would get the movie for 24 hours and we watched it once and then we're like that was good and then hit record on a blank vhs tape to get it for the second time yeah um but <laughs> uh so wait, wait, wait real wait, quick wait. So, so i have a question about james hong uh-huh. the guy in the shadow who's like who who it's in the past when they're talking about when Alec Baldwin is like that that um uh opium warlord and he goes my brothers will come for me and then he goes and I will pr- I promise I'll bury you beside them I have no idea to I think be honest gets, I think that he's the character that gets shot with a like a ruger in in the beginning of that movie anyway yeah okay uh so real quick the way that John London got to meet uh, the director of this movie. So what's the director's name? Do you know his name? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm going to look it up while you tell me. Um, but he basically, when when London first moved to Los Angeles, uh, he was just a, a studio, like, mailboy. So he would just deliver packages to different people. And as we covered, the director of Black Roses and... Um, or no, that was, sorry, that was Rockula. Yes, so... One of the mail, one of the letters he had to deliver was to him, and he recognized the name and got really excited to meet him. And he goes, the guy opened the door, and he was, like, grossly overweight. Like, he was, like, 450 pounds. And all I did was say, I love Rock and Roll Nightmare. (laughs) (laughs) So this intro starts off with that guy's son. And it's basically like the ending of Troll 2. Like, it makes no sense. But the kid's, like, upstairs, and the mom's in the kitchen, and then something happens off screen. And then the dad goes downstairs to see what happened. And then, like, a charred-up, cake-covered skeleton oh, bursts so out of the oven. And then the little boy's just sitting at the steps going, Mommy? <laughs> Daddy? And then it fades to the longest opening credit sequence I've ever seen with just a looped synth riff over and over and over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, okay, so I watched this on um, YouTube Brian, that's how you watched it too? Or did you yeah, I watched it? it on the same way you sent you okay, sent me and, it. And Matt, you probably own a copy from VHS PS. One hundred well, no, I have the actual like double disc special edition DVD. What's the double disc? Uh just bonus features, interviews, oh, okay. shit like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Um so the version that Brian and I watched, it it's its title card is The Edge of Hell and not Rock. That's on that's on the dvd as well <laughs> okay so i wonder if there's some reason why i mean the edge of hell is just as terrible of a title as rock and roll nightmare but rock and roll nightmare at least has a bit of the fun that you get out of this movie in it the edge of hell is just kind of like a throwaway it sounds like something that you would have watched in the uh, early 90s on local access tv uh yeah you know that was like a 70s throwaway like 
Hell movie. I don't know. Well, and I was going to say, in a weird way, not that this really matters that much, Edge of Hell also kind of gives away the the phenomenal ending. <laughs> the film. Like, is, is, does it really give away the ending? I don't think it does, because nothing... I don't know. Ending. I've seen this ending without knowing the build-up or the backstory or the actual, like, um, just the fight scene. And yeah. The fight scene is bombastic. But without, <laughs> Absolutely insane. without the explanation and the exposition for it, it's not nearly as bombastic. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's crazy, but it just looks absurd without being so, so like so much of like a, you know, a cattle brand, what it would be like <laughs> on your brain. That's what this is. Somebody <laughs> took the top of my skull off, took a cattle brand and smashed it into my gray matter and i will never forget the end of rock and roll nightmare <laughs> but we get, actually i did the math or I, I watched the um i watched how long it took this wide shot footage of this van um at the beginning with that terrible sam synth, terrible sampled synth uh song wow that's a mouthful uh yeah. it's four minutes long <laughs> Yeah, it's it feels like an eternity. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing but a dude just like fist pumping in the front seat of the car while he's driving. That's the entire sequence. Yeah, uh, uh, an entire day doing that. Like that. That was a sh- a day of shooting. I want the record to show that I have the soundtrack to this movie now. Because uh, <laughs> again, assume. John Jonathan London bought it and then he sent it to me. And I want you guys to understand how bad the soundtrack is. Uh, we watched soundtrack. The movie, the soundtrack is an hour and 10 minutes long, which means that it's only 10 minutes shorter than the actual movie. <laughs> and it runs 28 tracks. Most oh of them God. just weird instrumental synth stuff. And then like three really good songs. Yeah. Well, Jesus. so John Michael Thor is the, is the star of this film. Um, and the main protagonist. And um, I, 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 don't understand why they would have like a rock band, like a heavy metal band, and then really bad synth that eats up so much of the movie because like it's they have these songs that were obviously from Thor's record that they are just like we're gonna put we're gonna build a movie around your band and make you famous and um, okay sure I mean if I was gonna, <laughs> if I was in a heavy metal band in 1987 I would have jumped at the same chance uh regardless of how well I could act and I'm not saying I could act any better than John Michael Thor but you certainly could act better than that guy putting on a fake British accent throughout the entire oh, movie. Oh, no God, it's supposed dude. to be Australian isn't it I don't know what the fuck it's supposed to be oh, but it ain't man. right yeah <laughs> like, yeah but the, the, actually there, there are so many great lines in this movie because it is very aware of what it is you know, like they get to the so they open up the van and like it's a clown car of of hair sprayed hair, mascara and pleather. Um, and so they're like, why are we at this abandoned house? And somebody goes to rehearse lame brain <laughs> the whole plan is that they're going to rehearse and record 10 minutes of new material. That's not even an EP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they talk about it like it's going to be their new album. Yeah. I don't I don't uh, well, I Scott, guess... I don't think you understand. They live they to live rock. to rock. <laughs> <laughs> that song's amazing if you read the lyrics. You're like, "What the fuck is it's the you most don't like read the lyrics. You can listen to it. It's not like it's hard to it's... understand the lyrics. But it's the most like I remember reading the lyrics and being like, "This is the most uber American metal song I've ever heard in my life." It was just about like we tore down the walls because they needed some rock. <laughs> like it's oh, just, God. it could be any song from 1987, <laughs> probably written in '85. You know, like spent two years of them playing shitty clubs and staying at different houses to rehearse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, somebody, I guess the implication so. Thor was um, the biggest rock star of Canada, or so thus says IMDb. Um, but then there's a question where th- somebody says, "But why Canada? Like they're an American band that drove up to Canada, which is ridiculous because they're a Canadian band that just went over to somebody's house in Canada." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then the, the, all the girlfriends are bitching because because this this is definitely a productive environment to bring all of your girlfriends and pieces of ass 
pr- prospective pieces of ass yeah. because like some of them ha- are fucking, some of them are married, and some of them just want to fuck. Um, we live to fuck, not not we live to rock. We live to fuck. <laughs> I had to confess that for a split second, because of it being a rock and roll movie, when you were like, all the girlfriends are bitching. I I, <laughs> no. I I was like, you mean like they're really cool? Or like, yeah. <laughs> you are so tragically unhip, and I love you. For it. <laughs> uh, what, what movie is that? Tremors when the kid goes bitching, bitching. Where to go, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't um, tell if that's Terror Vision or Tremors. I'm sure it's both. There's <laughs> one of the girls goes, no hot tubs, no dynasty. <laughs> And then, um, then another girl, or maybe the same girl, goes, "I don't know why you decided to be a rock musician. Why couldn't you have been become a coke dealer or something sensible?" And I'm like, "I know that these people know exactly what they're making, and I love them for it." <laughs> I have to call this out, and I don't like talking about this. I feel bad that I'm about to say this, but the keyboard player in this band might be the ugliest human being that I've ever seen in a film. And if she didn't get naked, I would have been convinced it was a man in drag playing her the entire movie. And I just need to get that out there. Jesus, you have such high standards. You're like, elbows are too pointy, two out of 10 would not bang. (laughs) The only person I didn't like was the producer. He annoyed me. He looked like me when he was dancing his ass off in the recording studio as producers do. Yeah, oh, wait, wait, wait. he's like a mashup of David Wayne and Nick Kroll, but if they were dressed as like every main character in the '80s, like teen flicks, like eccentric, annoying friend, like yeah. that, it, he annoyed the shit out of me. I'm glad Not he got that him. bad. You guys nah, are he... so mean. Okay, so by the way, I looked up the synth player, and she's fine. I think she just had a bad hairdo, man. Like, I don't know. Maybe I just maybe you're maybe I'm looking hair. at the wrong one. I don't remember. I just remember doing. <laughs> so- she, During the song "Energy," I was like, "Oh." So, so <laughs> I get it. Like, there are some very um, unattractive screen caps, but she's not that bad, man. Is she the one that goes down in the basement? I with think the so. Guy yeah, and then they find the kid. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's her. Yeah, yeah. She's not oh, that bad. She's, when she's they bad. find the uh, the young boy in the original Jumanji when he's half a monkey. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I also think that you're. It's not fair to that woman because there's another woman who the one who gets killed in the bathroom, who is just like very, very, very um, curvaceous. Uh, but every woman in this movie gets nude, like literally. I don't think, except for the girls who are supposed to be 15, they don't they don't take their clothes off. Um, but thank like, God, because a lesser movie totally would have. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that we saw that lesser movie, and it was um, oh house fo- house. What was it? Uh, house four, house three. What, what was oh, the, uh, the horror, the horror show. show. House three. Yeah, it's she's supposed to be seventeen. I don't care if she's twenty two when she's rec- uh, making the movie. They're implying that we're watching full frontal shower scenes with a seventeen year old girl. So anyway, so, um, so what you're saying is that her character, you're upset because she's only seventeen. <laughs> <laughs> she's only, <laughs> definitely not my cherry pie. All right. <laughs> Damn. We got to get them all in. This is the end of Rocktober. <laughs> like, this isn't going to happen again when we talk about <laughs> rock and roll, heavy metal horror. Um, so there's no place we'd rather spend our honeymoon than with the band. So it, the, Lies! The, like, <laughs> I don't understand. I, that's not a good start to your marriage, let me tell you. <laughs> right. Like, Megan and I, for our honeymoon, we went to Monticello. It was awesome. Like that's the kind of shit you do for a honeymoon. Not like go be go annoy your girlfriend while you play shitty drums. That was a drummer, right? Is that the drummer who is whose like girlfriend was there on the honeymoon? I can't remember. Maybe it's one of the guitar players. I honestly like I don't know who anybody was except for the except for Thor. Everybody else is kind of a blur. And they really don't matter, as you'll come to they, find out. Yeah. So um before so they have this weird dinner where the producer or their 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 manager, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> he makes them dinner, and everybody's like, "Oh, you're such a terrible cook," or whatever. And then they all love their his dinner. And then <laughs> he's like, "I guess I'm gonna clean up." And Thor goes, "All right, guys, let's tune our weapons." Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. I mean, it's a ba- so bad it's good line. But then uh, there, there, I don't even know what's better or worse about this movie. 
the 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 monster effects how nothing makes sense or what thor wears when they do their rehearsals because their rehearsals are like the whole band and then the band girlfriends yeah it's it's but but this first song which i believe is we live to rock right is that the yeah first the song first song is we live to rock yeah 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 so- we live we live to rock <laughs> <laughs> so much falsetto. um but the song isn't even i don't even think there's falsetto in the song doesn't matter but thor is wearing this like um this this uh how do i even explain it it's got it's it's teal was or no 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 the teal one is the second one the first one is just silver with silver sequins and it's like a tuxedo coat with tails but his first of all he's jacked like he is so muscular and then they so they give him this super tailored tuxedo uh coat and they give him gigantic shoulder pads it's just insanity then the drummer can't actually play drums and so they're trying to like intersperse the drumming because the drummer is kind of like eye fucking this his girlfriend or something um while they're playing because then she wants to bang or something i don't know but then while no one's looking this little cyclops demon which i fucking love he's adorable i I throat penis one-eyed monster (laughs) but yeah yeah grow up (laughs) <laughs> well no because then he hawks the loogie in the engineer's coffee which is very very so he already looks like a penis he's a one-eyed monster and he's hawking white stuff into somebody's drink oh god and the sound guy doesn't notice because he's still too busy dancing again and as producers are known to do and it's not the it. first time he's tastes semen am i right guys <laughs> how do you think you got the job <laughs> so no one like so someone had emailed us or, or messaged us on reddit when I had posted Black Roses and they were like, oh man, you're talking about heavy metal horror. I hope you guys talk about rock and roll uh, zombies or hard rock hard zombies. Rock and, and I was like, I got good news for you, sir. <laughs> Already done. Here's a link. But uh, the producer acts exactly like the talent executive does when he watches the zombies <laughs> perform in hard rock zombies where he's just like, oh, cancel my calls. Like, <laughs> yeah. I w- you might need to go grab that sound clip of Brian doing his impression because it is just gold. That was actually <laughs> Brian's first knock it out of the park moment on uh, on horror movie night. <laughs> oh, Christ. Uh, so the next line that we need to mention is, you get me so excited when you're so forceful, lover. Um, and you know what gets women <laughs> hot. I'm pretty sure none of these guys know what gets women hot, all right? No, and I I am struggling right now because I really I really underestimated how little I paid attention to the first hour. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, help us, please. I I, I mean, Sorry, I listen. Have peanut butter in my mouth. No, joke. I love I love this movie, but it it to me it's it's got a really solid cold open. And then there's a lot of songs, <laughs> and then it's got a stellar finale. If I was to break down the movie, right, there's so something that happens in the middle the- that's great. But <laughs> I broke down the movie like I, I was my job. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll hold our hands. You, for a little quest- bit. Question for you, Scott, because I did predict this, and I want to see if I'm right. Do you have a note about how some of these musicians clearly don't know how to play the instruments that they're hired to play? Dude, as far I just as said it, the drummer yeah. obviously can't play, like nobody. Oh, I thought it. you were talking about like because he's too distracted by the girl. I was like, also the actor has no clue what he's. Doing. No, no, like, <laughs> but, he doesn't. I don't think he even knows what a drum is. <laughs> <laughs> Where's oh, the man. bongo? <laughs> um. So I, I fucking I love this film. I I as soon as I finished watching it alone, I spent I, Megan and I were like the next day we were in the car going somewhere together, and I I spent ten minutes explaining the movie to her, and I was so amped that she was like, "Would you like to show it to me?" And I was like, "Yes, I would." We have. <laughs> <laughs> she is such an incredible person because she can just feel the energy radiating the love radiating out of me um as i explained rock and roll nightmare and when we get to the end scene i will go in depth on what really sold the movie for her but oh jesus before that um the engineer gets his shoulder bitten and it's so funny i don't know why (laughs) i thought it was so funny but i have like gigantic ha-has in my notes right now (laughs) 
Um, well, because it's all, all it's all puppets fighting them for like the first so like funny. 45 minutes of this movie and they're not like top-notch puppets like yeah, I, I don't, the three of us that. could recreate these puppets very easily <laughs> i mean brian did his yeah. mom helped him when he uh was a kid <laughs> did a <stop> show. <laughs> um but but then so thor is too busy being deep and intellectual to make love to his girlfriend which is just so funny because i mean it, at the end you understand why but it's just so funny because he's like Oh, I'm I'm writing notes. I'm uh, uh, he's like one guy is like strumming his guitar in the one bedroom, and uh, the Aussie guy is like a two pump chump, and he fucks his girlfriend real quick. And then um, <laughs> and, and I think all they have their, they have all their clothes on. It's it's very very odd sex scene. Um, and I actually have a note where it says nothing makes sense and nothing matters, but I don't even care. Um, and then I have another note here, another quote. Sorry. Um, I don't even know what, what, what the fuck is, are you sure this is the place? What am I, a retard? My money is on the retard. <laughs> like, I don't even, oh, 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 these are the teenage girls, the groupies. So there, there's a su random subplot that makes no sense and they don't even become characters later on. Like four girls are supposed to be 15. Get out of a car. It's like 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, yeah. It's We're pitch black. And it's they don't have the equipment or the lighting equipment no, to properly no. shoot the outdoor scenes at <laughs> night anyway. They had, like, a headlamp on them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but the, these girls come up to the, the house. And um, the, the producer, who is now possessed or something, because Maybe. he has on the arm... Look, all of this gets called into question in the last yeah, 20 minutes okay. of the movie. <laughs> well, we're going to get to that. But the, the, he explains that the road groupie responsibilities go, number one, grind the cocaine. Um, and then two is like make sure that they're getting their rocks off, I guess. But you think that the sound mix on a heavy metal horror movie would be good or at least moderately okay. But nope. This is like – it's like they had a boom mic in the other room. And that you can barely hear what they're saying in this whole scene because it's like they're over talking each other. And then he's like, come down to the basement, go to the basement, go to the basement. And I don't remember if they go to the basement or if they run out the front door. It doesn't matter because you never see him again. But then immediately the next morning, I don't even think they get coffee. They get energy is where I want to be. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love that song. Uh, got a da, 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 da. but there, the, uh, Thor. I have a a, a line or a, a a a note here that says the Thor's triceps are just eating scenery because, um, he's like I think he's got another shirt, another um tuxedo on tuxedo top on with coattails, but it's like teal. But his his like you could his see his arms through the 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 the. Uh, fabric and it's just nuts and um i was th the thing that would have really elevated this movie for me was if one of the guitar players had one of those futuristic guitars like the girl in um rockula you know like the <laughs> guitar that looks like it's an art piece uh they still sell them I, I i need one for my collection but uh then the the drummer and his hot to trot girlfriend um they get done with energy, and she comes up and goes, "Hot playing, lover boy." And, um, <laughs> and then he's like, "But he has been bitten, I believe, now, and so he's uh, gonna like kill her or something. I don't know." And he goes, "All right, let's go down into the to the lake." And it's the middle of the day, but they're out in the middle of nowhere, so it's fine. But it's like cold as hell there. It's definitely like. Um, springtime or something i don't know but i'm like oh god he's gonna drown in the lake isn't he no no not at all he's going to um take her down to the lake tell her to take off her top because everybody needs every everyone has to show their chest in this movie and then he takes his shirt off and a monster hand bursts out of his chest and it is oh it's great and in typical horror movie night fashion what does the monster hand do Gross it grabs movie. a titty <laughs> I mean, uh, I would expect nothing else from a movie called Rock and Roll Nightmare. Yeah. But I, I feel I, like she could have gotten away. The The amount of time, as slow as that hand came out of the chest and her yelling, it was like the fucking, um, what the hell is that movie? 
it's it's definitely a parody movie, but like it just keeps cutting back to like them screaming, and it it's, cuts in the cars just as far awesome as Awesome Powers. Yeah, Awesome Powers, man. With the is it, oh, but is it awesome also powers? another one too. I mean, it's happened in a number. Yeah, it's of a, it's a classic joke, but yeah, Austin awesome Powers. It's the dude from Man TV about to get run over by the steamroller. <laughs> No! Yeah, yeah. We make that reference so much. If we ever have, redid the brain, I feel like we would have to make that reference again. Yeah. So, have you ever seen? Because um, Brian can probably attest to this, but for a long time, all three Austin Powers movies were like some of the only DVDs that we owned. <laughs> so we would watch like everything, including the bonus features. And there's a really weird deleted scene from the first Austin Powers movie. <laughs> Or maybe it's the second one, but it was supposed to be this ongoing joke that every time that that particular character dies, because he plays a character that dies in every one of the Austin Powers movies, that it would also show them calling his wife and telling him that he had yeah. died. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember it's just, that just like sure. a steamroller, huh? <laughs> and he did, and he didn't move. Weird. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. Bye. And she like hangs up the phone. Like, you know what isn't as funny as we thought it was as kids? The deleted scenes is just when um, Doctor Evil and Austin Powers are in college together, and his book is covering his cock, and all the different titles of the books we thought was so funny. Have you seen oh, my Longfellow? <laughs> I'm looking at your Longfellow right now. Have you seen Have my you seen Dickens? <laughs> Have you seen my bowl, Zach? <laughs> that joke sucks. It does, not it? I don't even care. Yeah, but also we were the two people who thought the funniest thing in the history of cinema was just the old man laughing at Austin Powers for his Oh, my showing. God, dude. God, that is comic gold. <laughs> Oh, Christ. All right, so anyway, rock and roll nightmare. nightmare. So, uh, <laughs> we get the shower sex scene where Thor finally gives in to the whim of his girlfriend and they make love in the shower, and it looks super uncomfortable to yeah. film as well as to act in. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever had shower sex. It's, I don't like sex in water. <laughs> I mean, it. I got no opinion. <laughs> 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 so, it's not all it's cracked up to be well no. it doesn't look that comfortable since like john michael thor is about the same size as the shower yeah. so like his head is above the shower curtain <laughs> <laughs> also scott i'm not sure if you got a chance to look but i sent you a picture of what he looks like right now performing and it is phenomenal <laughs> oh my god <laughs> He's taking us to Flavortown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Wow. Oh, my God. That was fucking awesome. Wow. All right. Yeah. Um, so Time has not been kind to Thor, but. Um, well, so um, we, there are some other scenes where people get naked and I don't even know who cares. There's so much of it. It, it. Being naked means nothing halfway through this movie. Yeah, yeah. It's like not. It loses all chilling. meaning. Yeah. Yes. It's basically like being at a nudist colony. You're just like, well, there's some tits. There's a dick. Yeah. Whatever. Like, it's just, just another Friday. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> another day at the office. So we get to the. Um, I, I, I don't even know what this means here. I'm guessing that this is when the demon shows himself well wait wait hold on a second i'm gonna stop you there i'm gonna stop you there for two things one i have a note right before then which made me laugh way too hard which was when all the little minions are about to attack him and he drops his yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he drops his pen and then just like "Ah!" yeah yeah oh man that's the thing i have to talk about because i say my new favorite monster here is the killer cornish hen (laughs) Yeah, and then the Dick Cyclops does the finger smash gag where he's like putting his fingers up and then John Michael Thor stomps on his foot or stomps uh, him with his foot and he goes, Aah! Yeah, it's so ridiculous. But before you came onto the call to record, Brian summarized the interaction that kicks off the insanity of this ending and I'd really like him to explain it for us in his own words because it, it was beautiful. Because... <laughs> Let me tell you something. Thor is so badass, and it shows in this scene. He's just emotionless. And and uh, first of all, whoever calls the devil bub, for sure for real a bub, is cool. And that's pretty much what it was. That was like, you're going to die. He's like, no, I'm not. 
then he's like, I killed all your friends. Like, you didn't kill anyone, bub. Like, bub. <laughs> Let me tell you something. They were just from, uh, they were from horror movies. And he was like, I thought that one guy looked familiar. He's like, yep. And the guy with the glasses, bub. He was in the hockey mask horror movie, bub. And then he just. <laughs> <laughs> But oh, then, man. I mean, it, so you're sitting there, and you're like, okay, so it was the devil, got it, and then, <laughs> Thor, Check. And, then Thor's just, and then Thor's just like, you know, they were just projections that I created. You actually killed and claimed no souls, and you're like, okay, and then he's just kind of like, also, I'm a god, and you're like, what the fuck is this movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, how did you? How did you trick the devil the same way Bugs Bunny tricks every hunter that tries to? Kill? <laughs> what i i have two really really big things about this scene here where this is what makes the movie like the movie is absurd before it gets to this and then it just kicks it into warp drive and you're just along for the ride right so um the demon comes out and its mouth articulates one way and yeah. its arms don't articulate but they had like people that were puppeteering it and so its arms just like kind of flail around just in stupid fucking ways but so megan's driving the car and i'm explaining this part and i'm just like flailing around and she actually turns to me and goes can you not flail your left arm so much please i'm trying to drive (laughs) 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 so the devil (laughs) this is incredible it is almost no fun to kill one so stupid and of course like you know what i'm not stupid i know all these names for the devil i'm super smart (laughs) Yeah, Satan, Beelzebub, the devil. Yeah, yeah we all has know. Like eight names. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. But yeah, the 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 puppet for the devil literally moves like like a marionette that strings are tied together by mistake. <laughs> yeah, it it like... me actually of a GI Joe toy. Yeah, it articulates like a GI Joe toy <laughs> at, the wrist, at the elbows and at the shoulders, and that's it. Oh my god, I just realized what it reminds me of. So. I think Brian saw this, and I think Scott. You guys have seen Lost Skeleton of Catabra, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen it. It articulates exactly like when the skeleton's sitting at the chair and he's dancing, and it's just like two <laughs> strings on his hands, like moving up and down. <laughs> I, I would give it a little bit more credit than that. I did not try very hard with that. Wait, can we get into the squid fight? Because... No, not yet. I have one more thing to say. So when we get the the explanation, the denouement that like no one was there, that that Thor was there by himself that entire time, he made a fake girlfriend to have sex with in the bathroom in the to shower. trick the devil. <laughs> it was all very brilliant, Scott. <laughs> Man, don't question Thor. <laughs> all right, so we accept the challenge, Matt. Tell us about the slow mo starfish oh. battle. My God. So uh, most people that have listened to this have probably seen the movie Ed Wood. And there's a scene in Ed Wood where they have to shoot a scene with a giant squid. Mm -hmm. uh, But they forgot to get the motor for the squid to work. So they basically just tell Bela Lugosi to grab the tentacles and roll around like it's killing you. Apparently that's the exact same direction that was given to (laughs) Thor for these squid creatures. Because he's they're throwing them at him and he's catching them them and then then putting them them on himself and then fighting to tear them off again. Yeah, yeah. He needs to do a little Bruce Campbell school of fighting inanimate objects next yeah. time he decides to do this scene. <laughs> it is fantastic. Like yeah. this is wow. as someone who's shown this movie to a group of people on more than one occasion, this fight sequence is the crowd pleaser moment. Like this is it has to be. This is like if you are still there for this long, you get this reward. And if you walked out, I'm sorry. You don't get to enjoy this because you need you need the first hour to really appreciate how insane this twist and final scene is. And then easily the best song in the movie, which is We Accept the Challenge. Ah, <laughs> um, oh, you yeah. win this time, Gadget. And then they just use a flare. It's just like a car <laughs> yeah, flare. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, it's so, such a just a beautiful piece of trash uh like i i genuinely think that this is one of my favorite bad movies like this is we've talked about invisible maniac before and like how that needs more attention 
like this is there with like a sleepaway camp or a troll mm-hmm. two or a or a bird demic like just it's so every decision was the wrong decision and it's so wonderful because of it um just the best is there any other closing statements you guys have no, I would like to actually watch this movie one day. <laughs> this is one play. this is one for next time you see John. Like if you and John and Cat hang out, like Rock and Roll Nightmare is the movie for you guys. <laughs> Don't tell Cat that. She we've put her through enough. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, sorry to interrupt your enjoyment of Rock and Roll Nightmare. Don't worry, we'll be getting to those double features in just a couple seconds. I wanted to take a quick moment to remind you about our Patreon page. Patreon.com backslash HMN podcast. If you go over there, you can uh, make a donation. $5 donation will get you all of the bonus episodes that we've got. But we just dropped the Stay Tuned episode recently, which was a lot of fun. Fear Street Pitch is back with its second episode. You guys really love the first episode that was released on the feed. This is now a Patreon exclusive series. Also, all of the other fun shows that we have, Howard the Duck, The Wicker Man with Nicholas Cage. There's, we're getting a ton, man. It's been a couple months. There's like a good five or six episodes now in our back catalog. And hell, in about a week or two, we're going to drop an episode for the movie Arena and come and check out what we've got going on on the Patreon. Patreon.com backslash HMN podcast. All right, so uh, what was your guys' double features? I guess I, I could start, you know. Um, so we could, I guess it's easy to say that this movie is an acquired taste. Um, and this is kind of a reach, but I don't give a fuck. At the end, when he is fighting Beelzebub, I noticed with his hair and his outfit, he looked very similar to a character that Dolph Lundgren played in the same year. So I would do... He Man Masters of the Universe movie. (laughs) Is that yours? (laughs) Yes. Damn it! I'll change it. I'll change it. No, 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 no. You keep it. You, you. That's so fucking funny. It's the exact same. I like. Well, I changed it on a whim too because it. uh, I was like, oh, I would just do Hard Rock Zombies, and then Matt compared it to Hard Rock Zombies. I was like, shit, I gotta think of something else. And I was like, kind of looks like He Man. Uh, so I'll go next. So Scott has a couple seconds to think of another choice. Um, so I'm going to go with another movie that had an equally bonkers. I am God type twist. Uh, and it's a musical from the eighties that is infamous. It's, uh, called the apple, uh, from Canon pictures. Apple. And the Apple is this like disco musical. uh, And some of the songs are unexplainably catchy. And then other ones are just complete train wrecks. But the end of the movie is that you realize the entire movie is a, is a analogy for Adam and Eve. And that the record producer has been the devil the whole time. And then God comes down in a golden Rolls Royce and takes all of the good characters into the sky with him. Uh, to heaven and that's how the movie ends and uh yeah it's just bonkers enough at the end to really really make the movie worth watching because you're just like what was that ending (laughs) um and then there's you know there's like you know one or two really catchy songs Uh, i i really do like the the apple for just the insanity but fun fact the the world premiere they gave everybody a copy of the soundtrack and then they had to pay for damages done to the screen when the entire crowd threw the CDs at the screen after the movie was over. Um, so, Scott, you. All right, here's my backup because, man, Masters of the Universe is perfect, and I hope that everybody on um, Twitter picks that. Uh, Trick or Treat from 1987? Same year, right? All right. Same, Same year. 86. I mean, it, oh. 86? All right. Uh, I think man. 86. Uh, but I don't even care because it, that is, I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure that's my favorite heavy metal horror. Uh, it's the one that I can probably get the most rewatch out of. And so if you're going to do a double feature with rock and roll nightmare, you start with uh trick or treat, get the juices going, get the blood pumping. And then you, then you see if people accept the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I love trick or treat. Colin Ainsworth put me onto that uh, yeah. movie. Yeah. That and Parental Advisory were two movies that I love that he put we me used, onto. Both we used to Dee watch Snyder. Parental Advisory all the time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so 
so that was rock and roll nightmare from 1987 i i'm i'm rocked out i'm i'm very monotone actually for for this ending but great movie i hope you guys check it out we're on spotify right now there's a lot of you who've already started listening to us on there which i super appreciate uh check out the website at hmnpodcast.com that's where you can you know find out all you ever wanted to know about us it's got links to our instagram scott's killing it on instagram right now (laughs) Uh, links to the Twitter. I'm doing a mediocre job with our Twitter right now. And then a link to our Facebook group, which is always like the number one spot to to hang out for horror movie night conversation because everybody out there is so fucking cool. We love you guys. Uh, always know that you can email us at hmnpodcast.com or sorry, hmnpodcast at gmail.com uh, and, you know, send us your, your Dropbox uh, horror movie m- mixtapes because holy shit, that was good. Uh, so thank you guys. As always, just a heads up, we mentioned this prior, I think, but I want to remind you, we've got something dropping on Halloween night. That's fine. We also have bonus episodes every day leading up to Halloween. We're doing this for you. You think we want to do this? Yes, but (laughs) we're also doing it for you. So tune in and get ready for that because it's going to be a fucking blast. We've got some great stuff prepared for you uh maybe a, a thing that we did a couple of years ago and haven't done since might come back uh and maybe like a completely new thing that might be a one and done or maybe we'll do it uh, on a yearly basis who knows we never know it's crazy over here on horror movie night everything's always changing but we'll be back next week as well as every episode for the next five days all right bye guys <laughs>